I'm Miss Melissa and this is Miss Kim and it Hello. is time for the Fayette County Public Library story time. First story today is Jack and the Beanstalk. You've probably heard this story before. Lots of time but not before. Once there was a boy named Jack who lived with his mother. They were very poor and had to sell their cow to get money for food. As he was taking the cow to market, Jack met an old man. You won't get much money for such an old cow, he told Jack, but I can give you something better than money for her, magic beans. He held out his hand and showed Jack five speckled beans. Magic beans, thought Jack. They sound exciting. He gave the old man the cow and took the beans, thanking the man politely. Then he went home to his mother. Ooh, look at his mother. Jack's mother was extremely cross. Silly boy, she shouted. Thanks to you, we have no cow and no money. She threw the beans out the window and sent Jack straight to bed. The next morning, Jack was astonished when he looked out the window. A giant beanstalk had sprung up while he was sleeping and it stretched up to the sky. Jack ran outside and began to climb the beanstalk. Up and up he went, higher and higher, until he reached the top. There he found a road which led to a big house. Jack's tummy was rumbling with hunger, so he knocked on the large wooden door. A giant woman answered. She looked kind, and Jack asked if she would give him some breakfast. You will be breakfast if my husband finds you, she told Jack. He's much bigger than me, and he eats children. But Jack begged and pleaded, and at last the woman let him in. She gave him some bread and milk and hid him in a cupboard. Soon, Jack heard loud footsteps and felt the cupboard shake. The giant man was coming. Jack heard him roar. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Don't be so silly, the giant's wife said. You smell the sausages I've cooked for your breakfast. Now sit down and eat. After woofing down three plates of sausages, the giant asked his wife to bring him his gold. She brought two big sacks filled with gold coins, which the giant began to count. But he was sleepy after his big breakfast and soon began to snore. Jack crept out of the cupboard and grabbed one of the sacks. Then he rushed out of the house along the road and straight down the beanstalk. Jack's mother was overjoyed to see him, and she was even happier when she saw the gold. They lived well while the money lasted, but after a year it had all been spent. Once again, Jack and his mother had nothing to eat. Don't worry, mother, said Jack. I'll just go back up the beanstalk to the giant's house. And so he did. Just as before, Jack knocked on the door and begged the giant's wife for something new to eat. away, she told him. The last time you were here, a sack of gold disappeared. My husband was really cross. But once again, Jack begged and pleaded, and at last she let him in. She gave him some bread and milk and hid him in the cupboard. Soon the giant stomped in, bellowing, fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Nonsense, said the giant's wife. You smell the yummy soup I've made for your lunch. Peeping through a crack in the cupboard door, Jack saw the giant slurp down a big barrel full of soup and heard him tell his wife, Bring me my hen! She put a fat red hen on the table and the giant shouted, Lay! And to Jack's amazement, the hen laid a golden egg. Jack waited until the giant was asleep. 
Then he jumped out and snatched the hen. Fast as lightning, he dashed out of the house, along the road, and down the beanstalk. Jack and his mother lived very well on the money they made from the hen's golden eggs. But Jack wanted to climb the beanstalk one last time. He knew the giant's wife would not let him in again. So when she wasn't looking, he sneaked into the house and crawled into the cupboard. Before long, the giant came crashing in. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, he thundered. You smell the steaks I've cooked for your dinner, his wife said. And she put a platter of thick, juicy steaks in front of him. After gobbling up the steaks, the giant took out a golden harp and said, Sing! The harp played a gentle lullaby and soon the giant was fast asleep. Jack sprung out, took the harp and began to run. But the harp cried, Master! Master! And the giant woke up. With a roar, he leapt up and ran after Jack. Holding the harp tightly, Jack ran for his life. As he scrambled down the beanstalk, he yelled, Mother, mother, bring the axe! Jack took the axe and started to chop down the beanstalk. The giant quickly climbed back up to the top before it snapped in two. That was the last time Jack saw him. With the hen and the harp, Jack and his mother were able to live happily ever after, and they were never hungry again. The end. And that is all the story. Okay, Miss Melissa. Okay, we have an activity that I want you guys to help me with in retelling the story. So each of you have cards. Which is the first card at the top, top start of the story? Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. Wanna bring it up here and put it on the board, please? Jack and his mother and the cow. You want to come tell us, show us the next? Mm -hmm. And it's Jack and the cow, and do you remember who it is? The peddler? Right. What comes next? Uh, no. Yes, Jack. What throws the beans outside? His mother does. Or his mother throws the beans outside. I kind of got mixed up a little bit. <laughs> she throws the beans outside. Do you know what comes after the beans are thrown outside? Mm hmm. What's growing from the beans? Bean stalks? Mm-hmm. What's what are we gonna do with the bean stalks? Climb up them. Mm-hmm. So he goes to the giant's house and finds a Hen with golden eggs and the harp. And what does it do? What does the lulls him to sleep? And Jack runs away with the harp and the hen. Giant is happy? Is the giant happy? No. No, pretty angry. And Jack runs down the beanstalk and uses what to chop the beanstalk down? All right. the last one where 
Jack and his mom live happily with the hen to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Help them buy things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you guys ready for another story? I think our audience is probably ready for another story too. You remember what the the giant did at the end of the story? What did the giant do at the end of the story? The jack and he climbed back up. Okay. Yeah, that was a little bit different than the original Jack and the Beanstalk, yeah, but that's but okay. He so he climbed back up the beanstalk. And, he and so now this book is Look Out Jack, the Giant is Back. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look Out Jack, the Giant is Back. Well, you last heard of Jack. He had outsmarted the fee fi fo fum giant and made off with the bags of coins, the hen that laid golden eggs, and the magic harp that could sing so pretty. That old giant lay dead at the bottom of the beanstalk. Or, from our story we just read, the giant just climbed back up. So you thought that was the happily ever after end of that, right? You really did. I can tell. Wrong. Not more than 10 minutes later, that giant's big brother showed up. He was something fearful, twice the size of the little one, 10 times as nasty, and as ugly as slug pie. He started tying a rope ladder together so he could climb down and get Jack for what he'd done. Lickety split, Jack and his mama packed up the coins and the hen and the harp, then hopped on a boat to America where Jack bought a nice little farm in the mountains of North Carolina. That old giant will never find us here, Jack said, and settled down to raising the prettiest prize-winning roses you've ever seen. Life was good and peaceful and oh so fragrant. Until one day in August, when it was so hot, Jack had to pack the hen in ice to keep her from laying hard-boiled eggs instead of golden ones. He just finished the job and was having some lemonade on the front porch when there boomed a deep, angry thunder cloud of a voice. Wham, blam, hickety hack. I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him with mustard and eat him on toast. Uh-oh, said Jack. Uh-oh was right. Standing there atop a mountain, glaring down at him with mean green eyes was you-know-who. Who is it? The other giant. The other giant. Give me the money, Jack the giant demanded, and the hen, and the harp too. Bring them to me now, or I'm coming down to get them, and it won't be pretty. Jack looked around. No chance of running for it. He was caught red-handed, which would have made most folks as nervous as a duck in the desert. But not Jack. He waved real friendly-like and hollered, Be right there, Mr. Giant! Oh, no. Then right quick, he and his mama put together a little picnic for the occasion. 373 platters of southern fried chicken, 600 pounds of mashed potatoes with gravy, huge heaps of boiled okra, fried green tomatoes, and coleslaw. 1,000 biscuits with sweet cream butter and strawberry jam. 99 gallons of tart apple cider, a red checked tablecloth to spread everything on, and a dozen of his finest, most fragrant, long-stemmed roses for his centerpiece. That's a lot to eat, isn't it? All of this, plus the coins, the hen, and the heart, Jack packed onto his two mules, Thistle and Thorn, 
Then up the path he went, whistling like he didn't have trouble in the world. Because you see, Jack, being as smart as a tree full of owls, had a plan. As soon as Jack got to the top of the mountain, the giant started in again. Wham, blam, hickety hack, I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him on mu with mustard and eat him on toast. Then the giant stood back with an evil gap-toothed grin, waiting for Jack to fall all over himself, trembling in fear. But Jack smiled and said, Nice to meet you too, Mr. G. Maybe you didn't hear me right, the giant grumbled. He shouted so loud windows rattled clear up in New York City. Wham, blam, hickety hack, I'm going to get that boy named Jack. He now be living, but soon he'll roast. I'll spread him with mustard and eat him on toast. Yeah. As calmly as you please, Jack said, I figured you to be hungry. He pulled out a platter of the southern fried chicken and waved it in the mountain breeze so the giant could get a good whiff. Think of it as an appetizer, he said, to have before you eat me on toast. Insulted that Jack wasn't responding to his show of ferocity, the giant snatched the chicken out of Jack's hand and shoved it, platter and all, down his throat in one bite. Jack said, by all means help yourself. He was busy spreading the rest of the picnic goodies out on the red check tablecloth. But tell me, where do you think I should put the roses? Roses? The giant couldn't stand it. Just what did he have to do to get some respect? He snapped down another platter of fried chicken, then another and another. He showed Jack a thing or two until all 373 were gone, and the 600 pounds of mashed potatoes with gravy, and the huge heaps of boiled okra, fried green tomatoes, and coleslaw, and the 1,000 biscuits with sweet cream butter and strawberry jam, and even the red checked tablecloth. Then he washed it all down with those 99 gallons of tart apple cider. So there, the giant bellowed after the last gulp. He began again, wham, blam, hickety hack, but quickly his volume faded. I'm going to get that boy named. His stomach was starting to feel a right mite uncomfortable from all that food he'd crammed in. It was too much even for a giant. Ah, you get the point, Jack. The giant moaned, but before I eat you, where's the money? Oh, yeah, Jack said. Sorry, I almost forgot. He hauled out the bags of coins. Here they be, Mr. G. The giant's belly began to rumble and gurgle in a disturbing way. His next words came out with hiccups in between. And the hiccup hen that lays golden eggs. Did you bring the hiccup hen, Jack? Why, sure, said Jack. He held up the hen and gave it a little peck of a kiss. The giant belched so big. Burp. Folks in the valley thought a thunderstorm was brewing. And the magic harp, he said with a grimace. I want to hear the harp sing. Good idea, said Jack, reaching for the harp. Nothing like the right song to calm an upset stomach. What song do you wish, Master Jack? The harp asked. The giant was clutching his belly and had turned a terrible shade of green. Jack whispered in the harp's ear. The harp began to sing. Fee, fi, fiddly dee, you'll not get the gold, the hen, or me. Jack is too nimble, he's just too quick. Watch him run, slickety, lickety split. And with that, Jack took off like a shot. The giant jumped to his feet, screaming, Come back here, you! But quickly doubled over in pain. It looked like Jack was going to make a clean getaway, 
just like he'd cleverly planned. Until the giant, who was not quite as stupid as Jack had thought, pulled a trick of his own. He kicked off his boots and waved his smelly old toes in the air. Imagine the stinkiest feet ever. Then imagine 10,000 more. One whiff and a flock of geese fainted in midair. Trees killed over like wilted lettuce. Why, well, even the clouds in the sky took off for Canada. The smell was so bad, Jack couldn't handle it either. He became dizzy. His knees buckled under him and he fell to the ground. And so this story might have tragically ended with Jack spread with mustard and eaten on toast and the coins in the hen and the magic heart back in giant land if Jack hadn't been such a quick thinker. Gasping for breath, he crawled to his roses and breathed deeply. So fragrant were they that he instantly revived and escaped down the mountain with all the loot. Whew. The giant became madder than a rained-on rooster. In a tantrum, he stomped his feet so hard the vibrations went all the way to California, where some folks say they are shaking things up still. He stomped again and again, harder and harder, until the jolts were so powerful that the top of the mountain fell in, swallowing him and his stinky tootsies too. There he stays to this very day. And Jack? Why, he's back on his farm with his mama, gathering golden eggs, listening to that magic harp and growing the prettiest, most fragrant roses you can imagine. He'll get married soon, I reckon, and live happily ever after. Because this time, that really is the end of the story. Wham, blam, hickety hack, no more giants to bother Jack. He now be living a life of ease, sitting on the front porch, pretty as you please. Now, what do you think about that? Look out, Jack, the giant's back. <laughs> you think there'll be another giant? Yeah. Do you? There's another. Hmm. You might have to write that story. Would you like to hear one more? This one's shorter, a little bit shorter story. The Jungle Grapevine. No more Jack stories. <laughs> Turtle and bird walked under the African sun. Turtle has an interesting shell, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. The watering hole is always good for a laugh, Turtle said. But lately the humor has been drying up. Bird took off. As he flew, he wondered, what did Turtle say? Bird saw elephant. Bird said, I just saw Turtle. He told me the watering hole is drying up. It takes a lot of water to quench an elephant's thirst. Just the idea of drought made elephant trumpet Elephant's trumpeting woke up Snake. What's so exciting, he asked. Elephant bellered. The water hole is dry. Didn't Turtle say the water hole is drying up? And now the elephant said the watering hole is dry? Snake slithered off to see for himself. Hmm. And when Snake arrived, the watering hole was full. He told Crocodile, the watering hole is not dry. It's not too high. If anything, it will flood. And a flood would wash away the banks where Crocodile slept in the sun. He snapped his teeth and splashed his tail in distress. 
crocodile splashing spooked a flock of flamingos. Taking flight, they filled the sky and called a warning. Croc, croc, flee, flee. Crocodile thought the flamingo's warning was for him, proof that his fears of a flood had come true. He shouted, my gracious, it has begun. Gazelle was startled by the ruckus. She sprinted off across the plains. Do you recognize all these animals? Gazelle saw lion on the prowl to save herself. She repeated what she thought crocodile had shouted. Gazelle exclaimed, the migrations have begun. Is that what they said at the beginning? Mm -hmm. No, what was it they said? The watering hole is drying up. For lion, the migrations of zebras and wildebeest herds meant easy hunting. He trotted off to the watering hole to catch his dinner. Of course, there were no zebras and no wildebeest at the watering hole. Instead, lion saw hippo. Lion skulked back into the bush, grumbling, don't believe everything you hear. Just then, bird swooped down. He landed on Hippo's rump. Hippo wallowed down. I love the watering hole. It puts me in such a good humor, he said. Bird flew back to Turtle. I was just at the watering hole, he said. And Hippo has a good sense of humor. Turtle laughed. Hippo is funny. His jokes spread like wildfire. And when he gets going, there's no stopping him. Bird took off again. And as he flew, he wondered, what did Turtle say? Something about the fire that can't be stopped? What? Do you believe everything you hear? Good idea. I wouldn't believe everything I hear either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just want to take this time to remind you that there's activity sheets available at the library. Uh, so just stop by and pick them up. And we'd like to thank you for joining us for a story time. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.